we, my father, mother, brother, and I, arrived in New Zealand in November 1948 and we moved to Palmerston North at the beginning of 1949, ready to start in a new school. I was 14 years old when we moved to New Zealand. Palmerston North was the only place where he could get a house. It didn't matter. One place in New Zealand was as far from <coughs> as any other from Budapest, Hungary, where we came from. We had a look at the school, playing fields as far as the eye could see, with a green corrugated iron shed at the far end, which I learned much later how the swimming pool. The school I came from had no playing fields. We kicked the ball around as best as we could in the enclosed courtyard in the middle of the school building. We had to get school uniforms. Whoever had heard of school uniforms? Why did boys have to wear a uniform? Schools were not the army. By the time we arrived, the shops had sold out of the regulation grey jacket, so I had to make do with a brown jacket. When the boys lined up, there were 499 boys wearing grey jackets and just one wearing a brown one. As if I wouldn't have had other problems. I spoke no English. My mother had to interpret for me. Every boy rode a rally bicycle. I had a solid, heavy German Adler pipe. I was just strikingly different. And so was the school. In the school I came from, boys were treated as adults. They were expected to behave like adults, read adult books, and discuss serious adult topics. Here, the teachers walked around with a cane and would cane the young adults and men who stepped out of line. All of us at my own school had survived the war, the siege of Budapest, and we knew a good deal more about life and its adversities than the boys I had encountered in Palmerston North. My father and mother had survived concentration camps through a chain of miracles, while my brother and I survived almost starved to death in the Budapest ghetto. Having been through the terrible experiences of the war, and the German occupation, my father had de determined to get away from his get away from his country as he uh, get as far away from his country as he could. He felt betrayed. His neighbors were complicit in murder, or at best were passive bystanders. He saw New Zealand as a peaceful place with decent, caring people. This is where he chose to live and bring up his boys. I arrived in Palmerston North thinking of the close friends I had left behind, bemused by the world we found ourselves in. I worked hard to learn English and my, by my second year at school, to my great embarrassment, I taught the class in every subject except English. The rector made a big thing of this. I would have liked to hide under my seat. I settled in well in school, made friends, not close friends like the ones I had left behind, but new friends. I played football with a round ball, played tennis in a hit and miss fashion, more or less fitted in. But after four years, I was ready to leave without going on to what was then the upper sixth, no, year 13. Later, I missed this final year of schooling. I might have done better at university. I have some fun sentimental memories of the school and my teachers, but they were difficult times. People meant well, but they could not imagine what we had experienced. We were all, we were the only refugees, new immigrants. People stopped and stayed at us.